Hey, everyone. Hope everyone is having a great time with the great bead extravaganza this weekend. Hey, everyone. I, whoops, got to mute that. Hold on. Great. Happens every time. Um, I'm Tracy with TRCast, and I'm happy to see you all. And hope you're not too overwhelmed with all the great stuff that's happening. I watched um, most of Kay's right before mine. And that was just really fun. I love, I love bead soup projects and that one was great. You can use whatever you have to just create a beautiful little arrangement of beads for that particular design. So um, that was fun. And I know that there's just been a ton of other great stuff going on all weekend. Hope you guys are holding up. Hope you're hydrating. Hoping, hope you're eating good snacks and uh, keeping your energy up. And let's see, uh, there's me today and then there's who comes after me? Um, Jamie Yoshida. And then I think there's one more. And I'm sorry, I don't have the schedule in front of me. Um, and I'm not quite sure who wraps us up. Brenda, maybe? I think Brenda. And I might be someone missing someone in between. But point is, lots of great stuff still coming. So feather pendant. Um, this is our three inch feather pendant. Um, we launched this part and our two inch feather pendant. Um, 2018, it was a, a little collection we called Western Winds, and um, these two feathers were part of that. And one of the first things we did was go, hmm, I wonder if you can use, where are my bracelet bending pliers? I wonder how it would work to bend those components. So we got out some bracelet bending pliers, and we got out some hole punching tools. There's uh, more than one type of those. And we set to work modifying these and it worked really, really fabulously. This bracelet has been just a hit. And so that's what I'm going to show you guys today. I'm gonna to demonstrate both um, bracelet bending pliers and um, pole pinching tools. And we'll make this bracelet, which I posted a link to, um, I'm pointing to my computer screen like you guys can see it. I posted a link to that at the top of the comments. And I also posted it in the files on the TGBE group. So um, you can download that and follow along if you like. Um, this particular design is not a kit. It is just a downloadable project on our website. So um, you can go there and uh, make your purchases and hopefully make this um, sometime down the road. And there's other ideas to share with you too. Got a lot of stuff on my workbench, but I'm gonna have us get through the projects first and then we'll look at um, a couple other things. And um, also I'm gonna give, we're gonna actually be making two bracelets. I'm gonna do this one, the, uh, the one I posted the link to, and I'm going to do this little one that I just made uh, on Friday because I wanted to have an additional um, project that featured the two inch pendant. So we're gonna do both of those and I want us to get started so we have time. And I also set up um, kits for both of those. As I said, they're not kits that we sell, um, you know, put together, but I put together all the components and um, the instructions are here in the three inch one and I'm writing some instructions for the two inch one. And I'm gonna give those away. Um, so during this presentation, Whoever comments on during the presentation will be automatically entered. And on Tuesday, I'll probably draw the names. I'm not going to try and do it today while we're while we're doing this, but I am going to pull um, names for to win those two kits on Tuesday, and then I'll just reach out to you. And um, or maybe I'll make I'll make an announcement in the um, Great Beat Extravaganza group too. So because you know, keep the content going even after the weekend's done. So that's what we'll do. So good luck. Um, and let's get started with the demo. So um, the three inch pendant bracelet first. Um, this is pretty easy um, and it's pretty quick, which is why I wanted to have a second project to show you guys. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take that three inch pendant and I'm gonna take some bracelet bending pliers. These are called nylon jaw bracelet bending pliers. I, that's what I call them. I'm assuming that you will be able to find them easily on the internets if you use that, um, <clears throat> that search term. Um, they, several manufacturers make them. These particular ones are from Beadsmith and they're all the same basic idea. You've got nylon jaws that have a curve in them. 
So I'm going to take my pendants and I'm going to actually start at one end and just very gently start to. Now, these um, TR cast pendants are plated. So you want to be gentle because you don't want to damage the plating. Um, so it's kind of a slow little, slow little gentle process. I'm just going to keep moving along. Let me turn it this way so you guys can kind of see what's happening. It's just gently curving the pendant. <clears throat> and I'm going to come down here and do the loop as well. And I'm just going to keep working it until I feel like it's a nice curve. And you, you'll be surprised. You can actually get quite a nice curve out of it if you just keep at it. And also, if you don't have bracelet bending pliers or not interested in buying bracelet bending pliers, you can also use just something else as a mandrel. For example, these, this is about a two inch tube of just some lobster clasps that I happen to have sitting on my workbench. I can, you want it to be something fairly firm and solid. So actually if I had, if I had prepared, I would have probably got myself a little um, glass jar to work on. But you can also just use a round form you know, if you have a wooden or a steel bracelet mandrel, that would work ideal. If you don't have that, when you don't have the bracelet bending pliers, just find kind of something round to use as a mandrel. And just keep pressing it and forming it. And you can see that it's creating a nice, a nice curve. And I will try to keep up with some, um, comments you guys but this flies and my my eyes are on my um my eyes are on my oh yes a can of soup somebody suggested a wine bottle yes margaret of course always handy and everyone has it right um i will try to keep my eyes on the comments guys but my my eyes are on my workbench for the most part so i'll miss stuff but if you have questions please be sure and put them in there because i will go and look later um and respond to everybody won't happen until next week probably but that's what i will do so now we're going to move on to um, metal hole punching tools and there are plier style and there are i'm really not sure what to call these i always just call them the twisting ones um there's a couple different brands of those um, this one is Beadsmith. We got your Euro Punch beads, Beadsmith again. You can find these um, in different types and in different sizes. So you can really find ones that make a lot of different size holes. I was playing with this piece last week. Not, let's see, how could you maybe see that better? Maybe if I put this behind it? No, that's terrible. Um, the point being, that you can get different size holes. So this one was about a two millimeter or 2.5 millimeter hole. And I used these pliers for that one. These are some heavy duty metal hole punching pliers by Swanstrom. They come in 2.5 and 3.5 millimeter. They make nice big holes. Um, and then the plier style and the twist style, you can find from like one millimeter up to one eighth of an inch. So there really is a lovely range to work with. Um, I'm just going to use the 1.5 millimeter plier style. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use a fine point Sharpie and I'm going to make a mark about 1 8 inch in from the tip of the feather. I don't want to go too close to the tip of the feather because when I punch that hole, it can, it can misshape that metal. I don't want to do that. So I want to make sure I'm kind of well back from the tip of it. And then I'm just going to place my pliers against it and give it a squeeze. If there's a little uh, ridge on the feather there, so it makes it a little bit slippery, but I'm going to try and make sure it stays centered. And then I just punch that and give it a twist. And I've got a nice little hole right there. So uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? I did read the instructions before I did this, but it occurs to me that because I'm going to be threading this um, cord through there, I need bigger ones. That 1.5 isn't going to do the job. So I'm going to come back at it with a 1.8 and just kind of punch right over it. 
I wasn't thinking of that when I was showing you all the different tools. But yeah, I definitely want this to be big enough to thread my leather cord through. And I'm just going to kind of, I noticed as I was using the hole punching pliers that it bent the tip a little bit. So I'm just going to come back and curve that down a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Now I have um, some two millimeter cord. I have two pieces of 12 inch cord and I'm going to thread. First, I'm gonna cut the tip of that cord so it's gonna make the threading easier. I'm gonna thread that through the hole that I just punched. And also something um, handy that you could keep on hand I'm going to stretch this a little bit too before I use it. I try to do that with leather cord um, always just to give it a little bit of stretch before I um, work with it. And that way, whatever you create, it will kind of um, reduce the amount of stretching it might do after the fact. And I also want to grab a little round file. And what I'm going to do oops, is just take that file and smooth the inside of that hole a little bit to make it because I noticed that that uh, leather was trying to be a tight fit. So just give it a little smooth with the file. And then I can thread that through. She says confidently, let's try a little more filing. So remember I was saying how many different sizes there are in the metal hole punching pliers. Um, you could use like a 2.5 millimeter and then you'd have plenty, plenty of room for working. This should work though. We just need to convince it to do things our way. Right, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna thread that through Let's see how far I'm reading my instructions as we're going about two inches. And then I'm going to wrap come back with that tail and I'm going to wrap it around. This will be my working side and this will be my end. So I'm just going to wrap the tail around the working side. And then come back through the loop. I'm tying a little overhand knot right there in that end. And because I want that knot to stay put, I'm going to put a little tiny bit of glue in there. Because I don't want that knot to, um, and I'm just using some super new glue. It's a new glue formula that really works nicely with leather. You could use hypo cement. You could use E6000. I just want to make sure there's a little bit of glue in there because I don't want that moving. And then I'm going to trim that off. So I just have about a quarter inch tail. And then I'm going to repeat that whole thing on the other side. Thread it through about two inches. Fold it over. Wrap the working or the tail around the working side. And form your little overhand knot. I did use a 1.8 millimeter punch. You know, um, I'm responding to a question from Motorcrafts. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. I also, someone's also saying, please come down a little bit. I'm getting a little bit too high up in the work area. Um, you know, there can be a lot of variation in um, leather cord, the thicknesses. It might say two millimeter, but it's it might be quite a bit thinner, or it might be a little bit thicker. Um, so definitely, you know, check your cord, make sure it's going to work with that size hole. Um, and hopefully you'll be fine. You can, as I said, use a little bit a round file to enlarge the hole a little bit if you need to, if your cord's a little bit too thick. And you could also try this with 1.5 uh, millimeter cord. So now I've got I've got my, my uh, focal pendant curved. I've got my two sides of my bracelet attached with my, with my knots, a little bit of glue. And now I'm going to finish the back of this with, um, Cindy, you did miss the hole punching, but don't worry. I'll be doing some more. Don't worry. 
And now what I want to do is form, use some sliding knots to form the rest of the bracelet. So I'm kind of lining, kind of centering these in the back. I'm crisscrossing my um, cords back there. And my goal right here is I want this loop to be big enough to fit my hand through. So it doesn't have to be big roomy fit. It can be a little bit of a snug fit, but you don't want it to be hard to get on. But so that's my goal. That's how big I want this bracelet. And then I'm gonna take one of the ends and fold it over. Try to make sure that your, your um, cords don't widen, you know. It would be okay if it was bigger, but my goal is to not have a lot of leftover tail. Whoops, and I just started my wrap loop without, or my sliding knot without even showing you guys what I was doing. Okay, I threaded, I crisscrossed my cords, and I'm taking one of them and folding it back on itself. So it's got a loop and it's got the tail, and then I'm gonna take the tail and wrap that around two or three times. That's kind of a personal choice. And I know that so many of you um, are fans of Kelly's uh, sliding knot technique with her, um, with her little tube that she uses. Um, you can certainly do that too. This is just kind of more of the traditional method. I'm holding on to the end and I'm Pulling, wait a minute, am I pulling that the wrong way? I am. Let's start again, because remember, I want to keep that, that general bracelet size the same. I don't want it to get it, for it to get too big. So I've got it there. Fold it, all, fold it over, wrap it around a couple times. Thread the tail back through those loops that I just created and through the original loop and then I'll tighten that down. And then I'm gonna repeat that on the other side. Take the other tail. I'm gonna make this knot right next to the first one. Wrap it around two or three times. I say two or three, but I really do want to match the other side. So whatever your, the number of wraps you do, you know, stick with the same for the second one. Unless you don't, unless, you know, I'm kind of a symmetrical girl. I like things to be tidy and matchy usually. So you certainly don't have to do that if you don't want to. All right. Good afternoon, Beverly from Redwood City. I used to live down on the peninsula. Um, okay, so there we are. Now I want to trim these ends off. And that part of the bracelet is done. So to put this bracelet on, of course, I want these beads close, these uh, barrel knots, sliding knots close together in the back. And then when I get it on to tighten it, I just pull those beads beads, I keep calling them beads, those sliding knots away from each other. And that's how you tighten it down to get it to fit. All right, so we have one more thing to do with this bracelet. And that is to create a little um, dangle. I've got our little Western bead and I've got a couple of, um, a couple of, oh, this is probably carnelian and this is some kind of turquoise. And I'm just going to stack these with the Western bead onto a head pin. And fold that over so I can make a simple loop. And I'm going to be attach, attaching that here. And I don't want my, I want my loop to be kind of roomy. So I think I'll trim it at about a half an inch. I don't want it to be too tight of a simple loop. Make my little simple loop. It's not a very tidy loop, but it'll work, I guess. And then I'm going to open that up and attach it right here where the loop is attached, where the leather's attached to the loop. And that is it for the first feather bracelet. It's really pretty easy and it's fun because of all those tools to play with. 
Um, and what is also fun about these parts is that they really lend themselves well to putting color on them. So you could try some, uh, there's various things to color leather with or to color, color metal with out there. You could try, um, I was gonna go into this more after we were done with the demo, but as long as I'm here, you could try Gilder's paste. You could try vintage patinas. You can try, there's a product that Christy Friesen who, if you're watch, if you've been participating this weekend, hopefully you saw Christie's um, video. She has a product called Swelligant that does that colors metal, and that's really cool. Um, I'll tell you a little bit. I'll show you an example of that when we're done with our second bracelet. Um, but anyway, coloring it uh, just a really really nice fun thing to do with these feathers. All right, so now we've got um, our our two inch pendant. Let me move some of the tools out of my way. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come at my, uh-oh, hold on guys. Did I lose some visual for a second? Every once in a while my, my phone and the cords misbehave, but hopefully it won't happen again. So I'm just doing the same thing, taking my bracelet bending pliers, going along my pendant, giving it a little curve. And then I think that I will, now I'm using 1.5 millimeter cord. So the 1.8 millimeter um, for this one is it's 1.5. The 1.8 millimeter punch would work very well. What size is this one? I wanna demonstrate the, uh, the, cur the twisty kind for you guys, but I wanna make sure I choose one that's got a larger hole. So let me see. Too big. Oh, this one looks good. That one looks like it's uh, maybe 1.8 as well. Um, so I'm going to demo the twist style one. And what I like to do, well, first I'm going to make a little mark again, about one eighth inch from the end right in the center. And then with this style, I have found that when you twist that down, it can sometimes scratch the metal a little bit. So I'm just going to put a little piece of tape over um, over the end of the, the metal piece. And then I'm gonna get this tucked in between the pin and the base, and then just start twisting that down. And you can feel when it goes through, there it goes. And then I untwist it and pop it off. And then I can take that tape off. We have a nice hole. That is about a two millimeter hole. That's a little bigger than I thought it was, but I should have I should have picked exactly the right one that I wanted to use before we started. But at any rate, that's great. It worked just fine. And the next thing I have is uh, jump rings. I need to add some jump rings before we add the cord. Now this project, I just, I made this up um, on Friday because I wanted to have a second demo for you guys. Um, so I don't, I don't have instructions written for it, but I started working on that as uh, I was waiting my turn to uh, do my presentation. I started working on that. So once I get that finished, I'll, um, I'll be able to include that with the kit that I give away. So I've got two large oval jump rings. Uh, Debbie, I put the tape on the end of the feather just because I didn't want the twisty thing to kind of scratch the metal. That really doesn't happen so much with the plier style, but it can with the twisty style. So I sometimes do that just to, to lessen the chance of that happening. I've got some fairly large oval jump rings that I'm adding to the ends one at the loop end of the feather and one through the hole that I just punched. And I've got about 36 inches of leather that I'm going to cut in half. And again, this is 1.5. For the first project, I did 
um, I used two millimeter. Jessica, I agree with you. You could have some fun using multi, uh, different colors on the feathers. All right, got my one, I'm a 1.5 millimeter cord cut into two pieces and I'm just gonna pull that, position that so that it's centered. And then for this original design, I used, um, I'm gonna post a link for you guys. I used some of our large hole beads that um, I think we call them our, call it our beaded large hole. Um, we have many large hole beads. I'm posting a link for you guys right now. So you could actually look at um, the different ones we have there um, to see what else might work for this design. Um, I am going to try, I did this version with our lar the beaded ones. I think I'm gonna try our little barrel beads for this one. We'll see how it works. The upside of this, the these barrel beads is that then you can crimp them a little bit to keep them in place if you want to. But they are also a larger hole um, than these ones. So it might be a little bit loose. Anyway, I threaded both ends through that barrel bead, one from each direction. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I've added uh, five beads, I think. So these ones are looser. So what I'm gonna do is once I get that first one in place, Oh, a bonus, a bonus demo. Um, I hadn't, I had not thought about this when I decided to try these beads. Um, our barrel beads are crimpable. I know that if you've watched previous um, great bead extravaganzas, I've demoed this before. I'm using some parallel pliers. I'm gonna get my loop just the size I want it. And then I'm gonna use some parallel, parallel pliers to pinch that barrel bead down to keep it in place. That way it won't keep moving around while I'm trying to add the additional ones. And I'm gonna do the same with the next one. And so on and so on. Add a bead, thread the cords through from the opposite directions and pull those down, pull that down. And you could make these loops as roomy or as kind of tight, you know, depending on you could adjust it according to what you have in your own designer's heart, I guess is the way to put that. Designer's choice. I'm making these ones about, I don't think they're quite a half an inch in diameter-ish. They're probably closer somewhere between three eighths and a half an inch. And you would just adjust your bead count depending on how big you need, um, you want your bracelet to be. You do, I guess if you're gonna make your, um, your loops bigger, you may want to um, add length to your cord. I started with about 36 inches. You might wanna do more than that. So that looks pretty good for the first side. What I wanna do now is bring these together and tie a little overhand knot here. Tie them both together in just a simple overhand knot. And you can see that I'm running close on this cord on this side. So I, I need to make sure that I've got enough to um, do what I need to do with the ends, which is on one side is going to be the button loop. And on the other, I need to attach the button, right? So I need to make sure I get, give myself enough cord to do that. We should be okay. Um, oh, and this is another thought. I was saying that potentially you could use uh, one, a two millimeter cord for this, but you need to make sure that your um, your cords will fit, fit through the button shank. So you wouldn't wanna get 
you wouldn't want to use two millimeter if both of those pieces weren't going to fit through that button shank. And I'm trimming the ends a little bit at an angle so that I can thread that through a little bit easy. Er, easy or finish my words, very important. You can see that we um, like to make sure that our button shanks in the buttons we make are um, nice and roomy. Um, we like to make sure that they will fit at least a two millimeter cord. Maybe not all of them do that, but we do try to make the button shanks so that they'll fit larger materials. Um, so, but I'm fitting, I'm fitting, remember this is a two point or 1.5 millimeter cord. So I'm squeezing more than two millimeters through there. But I did it yet the other day, so I know it can be done. So let's just keep, keep coaxing it along. As Kate Richberg always says, you got to show it who's boss. She says that about her wire wrapping, I think, but I think it applies to many jewelry materials, jewelry making materials. Come on now. Oh, Abby has a good suggestion. She says, we sometimes add one of Tierra Cast 16 gauge five miller ID jump rings to the um, shank of um, a button if it's not big enough to fit on the cord that they want to use. So at this point also, I want to make sure I got my button on there. Um, we had to coax it along a little bit, but I did it. And now I want to just slide that all the way up to that knot I tied at the end of the when I was done with the large hole beads. And I also want to make sure that it's facing the upside of the bracelet. And then I'm just going to tie a second, um, second overhand knot after the button to secure it. And again, we'll have to do some coaxing because I didn't give myself a whole lot of tail to work with. That's right, show it who's boss. There we go. And with this one, I may want to go in there and um, add a little bit of blue to that knot so that um, it doesn't come undone and I don't lose my button. It's unlikely that my button would fall off as tight as that as it was to get the cords through there, but you know, you want to make sure. So that is one side. For the second side, we're going to repeat that whole process. And the difference will be when we get to the end. Um, instead of adding a button, I'll just make two knots with some space in between them, and that will be the button loop. Oh, thank you, Cindy Camu or Camus. She posted a link to um, beadshop.com has parallel pliers, um, which we used to um, crimp the barrel beads. So that is good to know. Now, um, the big hole drill, you mean the hole punching pliers, Beverly? Um, check beadshop.com for that too but those are pretty maybe not every bead store is going to have those but um you should be able to find them pretty easily and if you're a wholesale shopper you can find them at the big distributors like you know um well i'm just going to say you should be able to find them you'll just have to do some shopping all right where are we at oh I started doing something different than I did on the first side. So let me back up. Oh, Abby's got two hole punches, the twisty kind. That's the beadshop.com. Yes, um, Abby's got them. Yay. 
And um, remember, if you missed the beginning of um, my presentation, how am I doing with time? I still have about 25 minutes, 23 minutes. Um, if you missed the beginning of the presentation, I am doing giveaways. I've set, I've put together a kit for this bracelet and for this one. And if you're commenting at all in this video, you are automatically entered and I will choose some winners next week to win those two kits. There's lots of chatter going on. There's lots of links being posted. That's great, you guys. This is what I love about this community is, um, you know, everybody, everybody can help everybody else. Everybody's got valuable info to share. Diane Hunter, um, I missed the last, oh, Kikendall, um, if you've got lots of feathers in your stash, this is great. I love the, um, giving you some ideas for what to do with them. Uh -oh, I hear somebody coming into the shop, which is unusual on a Sunday. They probably don't know I'm doing a live video stream. We may have an unexpected visitor. We're at four. I have one more to add after this one. And of course, if you um, needed to make a larger size, um, just keep adding beads. Matter of fact, maybe, you know, I tend to have a small wrist. And so as a result, I'm always making fairly small bracelets. But I think I'll add extra length of cord and extra um, extra large hole beads to the kit I make. That way there'll be some variation in the size you can make. Some people need a larger one, some people need a smaller one. Want to make sure that whoever is the winner will have enough uh, material to make a bracelet that will fit them. Okay, the beads I'm crimping right now are our um, distressed barrel beads. I posted a link a little bit further. I'm talking, so the comments go so fast. I can't see the name of the person who asked that question. Um, I did post a comment earlier in the video to our large hole beads that had a link to our large hole beads. Um, so if you look at that link, it sh those beads should show up in there. And they are, again, our four by two millimeter um, distressed barrel beads. And we are, I am reaching that phase of the live demo where there are so many tools on my workbench. It's getting to be very messy and hard to find what I need. All right, so what I did here is I tied that, I finished all my little beads, I tied a knot, and now I'm tying a second knot far enough away so that I know that the, um, the Western button will fit to it. So it's my buttonhole. I need to make sure it's big enough to fit it. And that looks, that's pretty good right there. So I can tighten that down. And again, might add a little bit of glue in that knot so that, um, so that my button loop stays put. And then I just trim off the end. So that is, I liked making this one on Friday and I was real intrigued. And um, it is a very fun design. I can imagine that you could also use a large hole 
gemstone bead for this. You could use um, something colorful, you know, instead of these large hole metal spacers, you could use something colorful like gemstones or something that would be, um, that would really be fun. Okay, Susan, I'm glad I could help you. That is, I rely on my tweezers for, because I, I am always trimming my um, cords too short or not giving myself enough to begin with. Um, Donna, I'm using super new glue for this, but you could also use hypo cement or E6000 just to secure a knot or bead fix gel. There's, there's a lot of options you could use. Um, so that wraps up the bracelet making portion of the demo. Now I did wanna show you guys some other things. Let me try and clear some of my tools away. Get really messy in here. Um, I have a tray of some of our other focals that work really well with bracelet bending um, tools and hole punching tools. And I also have a link that I can share for those because we have quite a few um, um, pendants and links that work really nicely for um, bending. Including, let's see, where's this one gonna take you? I don't even know where this link's gonna take you guys. Good luck with that. What I wanted was focal links. So I hope that's where it takes you. Um, we have many larger links like our, we have some that have words on them. We have, of course, the two feathers we just demoed. We have some we call that are from our Dulce Vita line. Um, this pretty lotus. And um, if you follow that link that I just posted, it takes you to a page that should have a bunch of focal links. And those are just those are just some of the components that are really great um, to work with when you're using the um, the bracelet bending pliers. And just remember that when you're doing it. Um, to just be a little bit gentle and to go slow because you don't want to go at it fast and like crack the plating. So I um, wanted to show you those just different options for using with the um, bracelet bending pliers because options are fun, right? And then hole punching, whole other thing, hole punching in our, um, in our components are also it's just really fun to do. It gives you, it widens the options for, um, you know, what you can do. So I did a video demonstration last week. This particular component looks like this when you buy it. This is one of our Dulce Vita pieces. It's called the Crescent Link, I think. The Flora Crescent, perhaps. Maybe I should have pulled up a link for the Dulce Vita collection for you guys, too. Um, but I demoed this in our Facebook Live last week, which you can find on the Tierra Cast page. This is what this link looks like when you buy it. It's got a hole up at each end and it's got a hole here at the bottom. But I wanted to add some more stuff to it. So I used one of the smaller hole punching pliers. I think this is the 1.5. And I added holes along the bottom edge, the crescent edge, so that I could dangle some little gemstones in that one. In this one, I just added two and also thought about adding another hole down here. I didn't actually get around to doing that, but I thought, oh, it might be fun if there's one more dangle um, from the bottom of this charm, but I didn't actually get around to that, but you could, so easy to do. Um, this is one of the focal links I was just telling you about. Now they are made um, with holes at the ends um, so that they're they're kind of in line with a bracelet or something. But in this particular case, I wanted to, I wanted it to be a necklace. I wanted it to function as a pendant for an, as a focal section for a necklace. So I added two little holes up at the top here, and then I filled in the uh, holes that were already there. I filled in with some um, epoxy and some little chatons just to camouflage them. Um, so that was a really kind of interesting thing to do with this. And I really loved the way it came out. 
And then with these ones, earlier on in the demo, when I was talking about colorings, I mentioned Christy Friesen's Swelligant. And um, she had, those are some, it's a little range of different products. And some of them work with the metal to actually put a kind of, turn it kind of a verdigris. And it worked super well with our copper finish products. So that's what I used on this design. It used this, um, what do we call this? We call this our one inch hammer tone link. And it's just a big round hammered disc that um, comes in several different um, comes in several different finishes. And I did the same thing with the whole metal hole punching pliers. I just put a series of um, holes around the edge and then I hung some chain, some chain on the ends of it. And I, that swell again just worked so cool um, on the copper parts. Um, Dulce Vita, that's what that is guys. Let me see if I can pull you up a link for that. Give me half a second here and I'll pop a link into the comments. Um, that Dulce Vita is a, a group of components that can, we came out with in 2017 um, that, were, that were inspired by polymer metal clay. So um, we did a couple, still, still pulling up the link guys, have patience. We did a couple collections of that. We did the original one and then we did some additions to it. Um, where the heck is it? Hold on. Um, and then we did additions to it because it really is a really um, popular, popular, popular line. I'm just gonna pop a link in here for you guys. So you can see all of, all of those components. So, um, I want to just punch a couple more holes with for you guys just to show you um, how easy it is to do this to use these hole punching tools to modify these. Um, and again, with all the different hole um, variations and tools and the hole sizes you can do. Um, it really opens up possibilities. So I'm just going to randomly kind of punch some holes just for the fun of it because tools are great right. So you can see how easy that one was. Every once in a while, when you punch a hole, you might end up with a little bit of roughness on the back of it. So if that happens, you just wanna take, um, someone earlier, uh, sorry, finish my sentence. You wanna take a small file or a little emery board or something, and you can just kind of file those, that rough edge down. Now remember that these are plated components, so you don't want to file so vigorously that um, that you damage the component. You just want to smooth, smooth that rough edge. The round one is not the ideal one. Um, a flat one would be better. An emery board would work. You just want to smooth that a little bit. Um, so I think. Um, that's kind of all I've got for you guys. I'm wrapping up. It looks like a little bit early, um, but let me see if there's any questions I can answer. Uh, 400 grit sandpaper would work. And let's see. Oh, can I show the bracelet I'm wearing? Sure. This actually is one that we did um, it's not one that's on our website, but we used the barrel beads from the Dulce Vita collection um, to make this cord bracelet. And I just, it is a length of cord threaded through a two hole button, a Dulce Vita two hole button. And then I used the, the Jardine barrel beads and some large hole spacers and some large hole gemstones. And I finished it off with a knot for the cord for the button loop. Very simple, everybody loves that one. Um, what size was the crimpable barrel bead? It was a four by two millimeter. And is there a tutorial for the necklace I'm wearing? How can you see the necklace I'm wearing? <laughs> there is not, but let me show it to you guys. Um, 
as long as we're just showing jewelry. Now it's jewelry. We've morphed from pro, um, from project demo to jewelry show and tell, and that's always fun too, right? So this is um, our. Uh, I'm getting all my lines, all my collections mixed up in my head. This Luna Moth is from our renewal launch. That is from a, that was a quite recent launch. That was. Um, did we launch that in January this year? I think so. It was just January this year. We, we launched something called Renewal. And it one of the components in it was this Luna Moth. I'm gonna pop a link in again for you guys if I can find this find it this time. Um and this braid or this necklace is just is also again, I should learn to only um wear jewelry that is actually on the website that you guys can download but i have my own personal favorites that i um oops that's not the right one sorry guys you got the dulce vita one again um but i have my favorites that i just wear myself and they're ones that i've made for myself and so they're not necessarily on our website so with this luna moth i just uh, put a little gemstone dangle it has three holes in it it's also also a very large link and it would be interesting to try the bracelet bending pliers on this one. I have not done that. Um, it really is much more of a, you know, you'd want to use the bracelet bending pliers if you were making a bracelet to give it the curve to fit around your wrist, right? Um, and this, this component really lends itself very much to, as a um, necklace focal or even at large earring focals. So I haven't tried it with the with the bracelet bending pliers. Um, that would be interesting to see what kind of a bracelet someone could put together with that. And then I just used some, I used some lovely suede lace. Um, I think it was called Nubuck. This is called Nubuck lace and just wire wrapped it. It's really a quite a simple necklace. So there you go. Um, I think I'm gonna bring my camera back you guys and um, still watching Karen get you a moth. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my camera back. I feel like I've overloaded you guys enough with, uh, with jewelry goodness, hopefully giving you lots of good ideas. Um, let's see, Jamie is coming up next. Where's my other little giveaway package? There it is. Good luck. Someone's going to win these. We'll find out on Tuesday, and I think I'll post something in um, in um, the Great Beat Extravaganza group, so you guys will see um, who the lucky winners are. And and we can, you know, we wrap up at the end of today, but we want to continue the the fun activity. So I'm sure that there'll be other stuff going on on Monday, uh, Monday and Tuesday. I'll be out of the office Monday, but. Tuesday, I'll try and catch up. And again, if you guys have questions um, that you've put in the, uh, it, it, my computer's dinging at me again because my my phone connection is is uh, being wonky. But we're not using that camera right now, so it's not a big deal. Um, don't even remember what I was saying, but I will be checking in on Tuesday and reading all of your comments and responding to questions. Um, hopefully giving you guys the answers you need. And Jamie with the Bead Gallery um, is coming up next. And she's always a blast because she is a bundle of fabulous creative energy and she's just a joy. So enjoy that. And um, thank you guys so much for tuning into um, the Great Bead Extravaganza uh, Midsummer Market Edition. And don't know what the dates are for the next event, but we'll keep you guys posted. And thank you so much. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the day. And um, we'll see you later. Bye.